And what was that? Uh, unrealized gains are still taxable offshore, right? Um, yeah, this thing that came up. Let, let me pull it up and then I'll I'll get back. Okay. There was an article that mentioned Trump during the Trump period. He he adopted this tax rule that said that unrealized gains are still taxable to U.S. corporations. That was the thing. If you guys want to search it, <clears throat> if you care. And they kept on mentioning the 16th Amendment and the 16th Amendment, as you know, as you probably know. OK. Purportedly amended the Constitution. All right. But it didn't. In 1916, the Supreme Court in Stanton versus Baltic Mining Company ruled that the 16th Amendment did not give the government any more tax powers of taxation than it already had under Article 1, Section 8. Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17 or whatever. So it's interesting, Elaine was showing me this article about unrealized gains. Now that's an interesting concept. Right, uh, that's what it was. It sounds really creepy. Yeah, because the definition of a gain is that you realize the gain. Otherwise, it's not a gain. So how can you have right. an unrealized gain? You see, you got to think this stuff through. <laughs> and it only applies to U.S. corporations. So the, the, the thing that I'm wondering about this is that was put in place to push corporations to come back to the U.S. Instead of built, instead of being built up in the States. Yeah. I think I, I think that sure. might be part of it, but um, unrealized gains, that's like really scary. You're being it's taxed on what gain. you haven't earned. It's an oxymoron. Go look at the definition for a gain. It's the realization of profits. Then how do you have unrealized, realized profits? Yeah. <laughs> you pay tax on profit you don't have. Yeah. You might not get. Because on real estate, I mean, if the market goes south and you have, I mean, well, I mean, you could you could do it. You could you could report it that way. They'll accept it. Accrual based accounting. Why? Most of the time, it works against consumers. It works against. I'm a consumer. I might be an investor and stuff like that, but I'm still a consumer. I'm not like a. I don't. I don't own a big share of like uh, Apple computers. You know. <clears throat> but yeah, I thought that was interesting. I you know that's why I said Elaine. I I really don't care. It's interesting that you're paying attention, but. It doesn't really affect anything. And, you know, it's funny is <laughs> corporations come to the United States for tax breaks. Mm -hmm. The Americans, the, the stupid consumers, uh, they leave and they get worse. It's worse for them because they don't understand what they're doing. <laughs> Foreign companies come here to the States for privacy and tax breaks. Uh, also, Hong Kong. Hong Kong is a good jurisdiction for that, too. There's a couple more. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, so did you find it or what? Is that, did I, I found it, but I, what I was looking for was what they were saying about the 16th Amendment. And they were saying that it uh, allows the government to levy tax. My, I mean, I'm certainly no expert on this, but my understanding was that the authority to levy income tax came from Abraham Lincoln and his... Uh, uh, wanting to pay for the uh, Civil War by taxing uh, officers and elected officials at that time. And oh. the the oh. 16th Amendment is weird because it, it was never properly ratified and all it actually was supposed to do is reiterate what was said by Lincoln. Okay, well, uh, I don't know if that's correct. Lincoln is irrelevant because in 1913, the in, uh, Federal Income Tax Act was adopted. So that... Uh, isn't, that the 16th, isn't that the 16th Amendment? No. In 1913, the, the Income Tax Act was adopted along with the Federal Reserve Act together. They have to come together. So that obliterated everything that came before it. So it doesn't matter about Lincoln. That changed everything, the adoption of that act in 1913. And part of the reason why they had to bring it in is the way they did it, because they, the banking system kept getting defeated. Even during Lincoln's time, they kept getting defeated. And that was back when the banks had their own currencies. You had like many different currencies in the States. And so once they got they got tired of that, they figured out how to bring it in, which is beyond this discussion. But 
so in 1913, they brought in. Now in 1916, someone challenged it. This is how fast it went to the Supreme Court. Someone challenged the 16th Amendment. Let's see. I guess the 16th Amendment would have had to have been adopted right about the same time, 1913, I mm -hmm. guess. Why? Yeah, so that was fast. So anyways, someone challenged it and said it was unconstitutional or something. And the Supreme Court said, no, it's not. It didn't change anything. That's right. That's right. Rule, yeah. Yeah, it's it, just a misapplication. It, it, they're they're putting excise tax. Well, they're quoting the 16th, on and they should be quoting the Constitution. But if you quote the sixteenth, you just perpetuate the ignorance. It's not. It's technically not wrong because the sixteenth it didn't give it more power. It just restated the power the government already had. But there again, U.S. corporations. Do you think those pay any taxes? No, they they make money off the tax system. That's what it's for.